This is the second video in a series walking through the creation of a PHP Laravel CMS. So in the previous video, we got our database structure up and running using the Laravel Eloquent migration files. And in this video, I want to show you a small little Laravel tool called seeding. Now we have our database up and running. At any point in time, I can run my migration, refresh, and it will clear out my database and using my migration files, recreate that database. So this is great because if I make changes to my database, I just run this and it refreshes my database. If I'm working with a group, I can give them my GitHub repo. When they download the repo, they can run the migration on their computer and it will get their tables up and running. Now, the problem is if I create my application and start creating users and start creating projects and then I run my migration, I'm gonna lose all those projects and users. So the seeding tool is a Laravel tool that will pre-populate your tables with test data. Now the test data isn't great, but it, it's better than nothing. So let's add some sample data to our basic tables here. Now, if we look, we're gonna get into something we haven't really discussed yet, and these are models. If you go into your app and then models folder, you'll see a user file. If I open this up, this has all the rules for my users table. So in here, I can specify specific rules about each column. If some columns are encrypted, I can, I can specify that. If some of them are not massable, um, mass assignable, you can put those rules in here and we'll get into all those later. So first, in our migration, we actually changed it from name to first and last. So let's update that here. And that's all we need to do with this file. But before we can do our seeding, we need to create a file like this for our projects and types tables. So this users table is fine as long as we make that change so it matches our table structure. Now we wanna make two more of these for our types and projects. Now we're gonna go back to our PHP artisan make and this time we're gonna make a model and we're gonna make a model for our projects table. Now notice the model name is singular. So if we look at the existing one, it's user singular, and the new one we're gonna make is project, also single singular, and proper case, so capital P. And if we open this up, you can see it now has a model uh, template there for our projects table. Now at this point, this is all we need. We just need those models to exist so we can go back to our seeding tool and add some seeding rules. So I'm just gonna do the same thing for types. Now we'll get back to models in a lot more detail in some future videos, but for now, this is all we need. Go back to your application and inside database, inside seeders, there is a file called database seeder. Before we seed them, we need to pull in those models. So anytime a Laravel file is going to reference a model, we need to import that model like so. So let's import user, project, and Then down here, you can see we actually have an example of how to seed a table. Now, when I run our seeding, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna take our user table and empty it, just in case there's something there. I don't wanna keep adding to my, my seeded data. I'm gonna tape the project table and empty it. And finally, our type table and empty that out too. 
Then using this example here, I'm going to take our user. I'm going to use the factory. This is a Laravel tool to generate content. And I'm going to create, let's create two users. Then I'm going to take my project, use the factory to create, uh, we'll go 10 projects. And then let's create types. Now, the one important part here is our projects need to belong to types. So I actually need to create my types first. So I'm going to add type above project. And I'm going to use the factory to create, we'll just go with three types. Now the content that this factory is going to create isn't perfect. It's going to use lorem ipsum here and there. The titles are actually going to be quite long. The content will be lorem ipsum. It will recognize things like first name, last name, and name fields and throw in sample names. It will recognize email columns and throw in sample emails. All right, so my seeding is ready. I have specified how many records of each type I want to create. Okay, so I'm just going to go into the user factory and we split up name into first name and last name. So I'm just going to split that up. And when we specify which data to use, we say name, uh, first name, and last name. So these factory files basically define the rules that we are going to use to, to seed our database content. So here you can see it's going to use, for first name, it's gonna fill it with, from a tool called Faker, a first name value. The last name is gonna be filled with, from, a, from the Faker tool, a last name. And here it can generate things like emails and dates and I believe this password is just the word password. So we'll figure that out when it comes time to log in. But now we need to make these for our projects and types. So let's go over to our documentation and we wanna create some additional factories. So we'll go to the factory documentation and you can see here some sample factories. Now first we want to create a factory template. So let's go to our command line and we're going to go php artisan make factory for our projects. Okay, and while we're here, let's make one for our types. And if we go back to our content, we have two new files here, types and projects. Uh, let's start with type. This is a, uh, a quick one. So for our types, we just want to specify here which columns and how they're filled. So the title is going to be filled with from our faker tool. Um, we just want to fill it with a sentence. And this will use a short lorem ipsum block of text. So we'll save that. And then in our project, we've got a little more to this one. Okay, so in project, we want title. And the title is going to use from the faker tool, a sentence. And I'm just going to copy this. Okay, from our URL is going to use content from our faker, and there is actually a URL tool, so it'll just generate some random looking URLs. Then from our slug, we can actually generate a slug. From our content, we want to use not just a sentence, but a paragraph. So this will be a handful of sentences. And then from the user ID. Now this 
we want to pull an existing ID from an existing user. So we go in here and we say from our user, um, from all, uh, just grab a random one. And we're gonna go through this, this, these query tools in a lot more detail as we go on. But for now, we wanna do that for our user and the same thing for our type. And because we are referencing our user and type models, we need to go up here and include um, from our app models. Oops. User. Um, and now we go back and to actually run the seeding we can go PHP artisan migrate we want to run a refresh except this time we also want to seed okay now we're just getting one problem here um, we're getting an invalid argument for string format and I think that is due to uh, some of our factory content requires the use of uh, some of the built-in tools here and there is a string tool that we need to use uh, this you'll see this illuminate all over the place it's it's a collection of pre-written classes that provide support for different things in Laravel. So I'm going to save that and let's try this again. Okay, and we're still getting an error. Uh, last name. Oh, I spelt last name wrong. So in last name, last name. So we'll fix that and refresh. All right, and still getting an error. It's saying I don't have a column, and which column is it complaining about here? Uh, we have a column missing called slug. So let's look at our project table. Ah, yes, we forgot to include slug. So I'm gonna take our project migration and add slug. Slug can be nullable. It shouldn't be blank, but we'll let it be nullable just in case. And let's try this again. And there we go, successful. So now if we go back to our database and we take a look at our content, so in my Laravel CMS, and we look at our projects, you can see there is now 10 sample projects, all full with lorem ipsum titles, URL looking URLs, a URL friendly slug, uh, nothing for image, some paragraphs for our content, and it's connected to a type and a user. If we go look at our user table, okay, there's our sample user data with first name, last name, and emails, and our types will just be full of basic lorem ipsum. So now anytime you want to reset your database, you just run your migration with your seeding and you are starting fresh. This is great because you can set your seeding to set up some great initial testing content. And as you're testing, that content is going to get uh, probably bloated and broken and so on. And then you just rerun your migration and your content is all good to go again. If you need to make changes to your database or add tables, you apply those to your migration and then rerun your seeding and you're always dealing with great data. I also find this is great if you are creating an application off an existing one, your seeding could include importing content from the old app. So as you're developing, anytime you just run your refresh, you seed it, it pulls in the fresh content from your previous application into your new one and you're ready to rock and roll.